for joining us for tonight's event being hosted by the Youth Village entitled Black Generations United Mindset for Entrepreneurial Success. If you're joining us for the very first time, we welcome you. And if you've attended the first or second event, welcome back. It's very great to see you all tonight and see you again. Before we begin, I'd like to start by acknowledging that I am joining this call from land which is now called Ajax, Ontario. Since time immemorial, this land has been the traditional territories of the Mississaugas of the Scugog Island First Nation. I would also like to note that while we're joining the session virtually and from different places, we are all living and working on stolen land. Today, this land is still home to many Indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island, and I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land. This event is the final in a series of three aimed to connect intergenerational Black entrepreneurs in Southern Ontario. Throughout the series, Black entrepreneurs across Ontario have had the opportunity to connect, network, share about their businesses and business ideas, and learn about the amazing ecosystem of Black entrepreneurs that exist across our province. Tonight, we'll have the amazing opportunity to hear from our keynote speaker, Khalil Dorival, who will share more on, about his story on how he develops a winning mindset, navigates systemic oppression, and leverages mentorship. We will also participate in an engaging workshop led by Khalil to help practice the mindset of a su successful entrepreneur. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Aaliyah, my pronouns are she, her, and I'll be your MC tonight. I am also the co-founder of the Caribbean Coalition for Maternal and Reproductive Health, which is a regional network of maternal and reproductive health organizations based in the Caribbean. So thank you again for joining us this evening. As you know, this event has been organized by the Youth Village, which is a Black-led organization which develops, leads, and expands opportunities for intergenerational conversations among Black entrepreneurs, like this amazing three-part series, for example. So to learn a little bit more about who they are, what they do, and how you may connect, we can move on to the next slide. So the Youth Village is a nonprofit, Afrocentric network of entrepreneurs that caters to multi-generation. So these events, for example, have been catering to young entrepreneurs and um, more established entrepreneurs as well, because they believe in establishing um, and supporting businesses and growth among both uh, generations. On the next slide, you'll see what they offer which are workshops, extensive training, mentorship opportunities, and business coaching and support. To learn more about the Youth Village, you can email youthvillageorg at gmail.com. You can call the number on the screen, 647-570-6515, or you can visit their website, which will pop in the chat shortly, www.tyvo.org. I would also like to note that tonight's event is being supported by the Afro-Caribbean Business Network, or ACBN, which has been a partner on this entire series. Co-executive directors of ACBN, Ryan Knight and Nicola Harris, are joining us tonight, along with their co colleagues Charmaine Hussey and Chris Beth Cowie. They have been a great partner of this initiative, so I'm now going to pass it over to Nicola Harris, co-executive director, who's going to share a few words. Thank you so much. So again, my name is Nicola Harris, and I'm pleased to be a part of this amazing event. I'm here with the ACBN family. And for those of you who don't know um, about ACBN, we are a membership organization that is not for profit, and we have over 4,500 members. ACBN is pleased to be involved in this wonderful partnership to deliver this much needed program. We all know that focusing on mindset is a critical ingredient for success. Um, and thanks again to ACBN for your continued support and partnership on this. Um, I would also like to acknowledge the Government of Canada's support through the Federal Economic Development Agency for Southern Ontario, or FedDev, for strengthening an ecosystem for Black entrepreneurs. Tonight, we've actually received a ministerial message from Minister Tassi, the minister responsible for the Federal Economic Development Agency for Southern Ontario, which I'd like to share with you all now. It reads, I want to congratulate the Afro-Caribbean Business Network, ACBN, and the Youth Village for organizing this event and offer my best wishes to everyone who is gathered here tonight. The Government of Canada, through the Federal Economic Development Agency for Southern Ontario, provided the Afro-Caribbean Business Network with a non-repayable contribution of more than $1.3 million. This investment, through the Black Entrepreneurship Program Ecosystem Fund, is supporting the ACBN to deliver training, advice, and support for conferences and events like Black Generations United. The Government of Canada remains steadfastly committed to building a diverse and inclusive economy that brings down barriers and allow people to reach their full potential. 
Since August 2021, we have announced more than $50 million in support of Black-led not-for-profit organizations that are providing Black entrepreneurs with the critical support and resources they need to start and grow their businesses. Thank you to the ACBN and Youth Village for your commitment and your work toward providing meaningful opportunities for Black entrepreneurs to connect, share, and grow. I look forward to hearing about your program's continued success and to meeting many organizations like yours in my new role as the minister, minister responsible for the Federal Economic Development Agency for Southern Ontario. End quote. So thank you again to FedDev Ontario for their support of Black-led initiatives. Finally, we also have associates here in the room tonight from Fab Inc. who are supporting this event. Again, all the music that you're hearing tonight is based on submissions from all of you. We'll be sharing the playlist later on so that you can keep on listening and dancing after the event. I am now very, very excited to introduce you to our keynote speaker for tonight's event, Khalil Derival. Khalil Derival is a mental wellness coach, author, spiritual leader, facilitator, and invisible hero awarded by Toronto Police Services and Child Care Services. He's the founder of Khalil Derival Enterprise, or KDE, an organization dedicated to addressing the social and economic barriers that youth encounter through mental wellness workshops. Khalil's major goal is to inspire people to love themselves and in return to love others, and I love that. Known for his enthusiastic energy, Khalil is able to translate the trials and tribulations of life into relevant principles and coaching opportunities. On his journey to success and personal well-being, his sole desire is to change lives, sowing seeds of hope and teachings to bring out the best in people. Wow, so I'm very excited to hear from Khalil, and I'm sure you are too. So please welcome Khalil. Thank wow, that was amazing. Sometimes when I hear my bio, I'm like, is that actually me? Because <laughs> uh, it has been a journey, I must say. So I'm really grateful to know that I've been doing a lot of these great things in my community, and the person I've become in the process of that has been a true blessing. But before I start, I want to start off with just thanking Ryan, Jules, Tessin, um, the whole Youth Village and ACBN team for the amazing opportunity to be here tonight. Honestly, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here. So I want to thank you so much. And I want to give you all the flowers um, that you deserve for the great work that you do in community. These programs, these workshops are literally changing people's lives because I truly believe that information changes situations. And many people are changing their situations, especially young Black entrepreneurs. So before we get into everything, I want to do a quick check-in and icebreaker. So in the chat, what I want you to do is I want you to type your name and what is one thing that you are grateful for in the chat? Write what is your name and one thing that you are grateful for. And the reason why I want to do this is because a lot of times we think about what's not happening, what we don't have, instead of the little blessings or the things that we do have. And as a wellness coach, gratitude and depression can't reside in the same space. You can't be grateful and be like, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that, you know, I have family, I have friends, I have food to eat, I have clothes on my back, I have a place to stay, and then be depressed about, you know, what you don't have, or things that didn't happen for you in the past. So I want everyone, before we start, develop an attitude of gratitude. Understand that there's so much to be grateful for. I know we want the big things. <laughs> we have big amb ambitions, especially as entrepreneurs. We want the car, we want the home, we want the, you know, million dollar business. But a lot of things that we should be grateful for is the journey, the process, the little things, the small wins. Have you been celebrating your small wins? And one of the things that I know from my experience is the more that I'm grateful, I attract more things to be grateful for. That's a bar right there. The more that I'm grateful, the more things that I'm grateful for are attracted to me, all right? So I'm gonna quickly check in the chat, see what people are saying glows it's totally fine i got this i just want to read it out okay so ryan said grateful for warm weather in september right come on talk to me especially when you're from the caribbean you love your son <laughs> all right so norma said grateful for a healthy life right the greatest you know wealth is your health fatima said i'm grateful for good health amazing love that right you know they say you know if you don't have health you don't have anything 
I imagine you, you know, dealing with all these health challenges um, and, and that becoming your main focus. How about we start taking care of ourselves by the food we eat, by exercising, right? By doing, you know, meditation, Think about the things that we are actually grateful for, being around the right people. Carrie said just life. She's excited. She's so giddy. Like, yo, life, everything about it, I am grateful for. Andrea said my tribe, my family, friends, and mentors, facts, right? The people that care about you, the people that love you, the people that support you, the people that want the best for you. It's always great to be, you know, um, in that environment. And also having a support system, which we'll be talking about later, Aliyah stole it out of my mouth, my support system. That is huge. That is huge. And I think everyone here should have a support system. And if you don't have one, that's cool. That's fine. Now we got to start thinking about how we can build those support systems. So when we do go through what we go through, guess what? We have people who can help us get back on our feet, right? Bar Barrel Land said, I'm grateful for family, 100%. Tim Frey said, grateful for my wife and two kids. So a lot of people are just grateful for family, especially the pandemic it taught us that, yo, you know, a lot of things are unpredictable. But one thing we know, <laughs> we have family. <laughs> uh, my name is Deborah. I'm grateful for friendships, right? Have the right people in your corner, right? And I think we have to audit our friends. Are they motivating us? Are they inspiring us? Are they uplifting us? Right. And if you are the smartest person in your circle, you're not in a circle, you're in a cage. So you want to be around people who have different skill sets, people who can add value to your life and vice versa. You being the right person. And I believe you attract who you are. So if you're like, yo, why, why do I have people that are not aligned with, you know, my values, my roles, my belief systems? You got to check your heart. You got to check you. You got to work on you. Because I'm telling you, when you become Per, a person who's a great friend, guess what? The great friends will come around you and you'll be able to maintain them and sustain them. Khalil said, grateful that I never got COVID even before the, before the vaccination. So 100% grateful. I never got it too. So, you know, we're, we're blessed. Hi, I'm Kishana. I'm grateful for family. Always grateful for family. That is dope. From Michelle Rosanna, I'm grateful to be in the right mind, right? <laughs> I'm showing you. You know, when you're not in the right mind, especially when we don't take care of our mental well-being, guess what? We can't manage our daily activities, right? Uh, we, we can't show up because, you know, we're dealing with these challenges and those challenges becomes the focus. So we got to take care of ourselves, take care of our body and our body will take care of you. And Johnny said, grateful for my family. Hopefully I said your name right. And friends who support my goals and developments. It's it's so amazing when you have people rooting on your team and saying, yo, go get it. You can do it. Yes, you can make it. We need that. The, like society is going to tell you who you are not. So you have to tell them who you are, right? You know, you got to tell them who you are, what you stand for, what you believe in, and tell them to put some respect on your name. Chantel said, grateful for family. Chantel said love love these amazing answers super dope so i'm going to introduce myself so my name is Khalil derival my name means friend so you can call me Khalil. you could call me friend say meaning <laughs> tomato tomato i am a wellness coach so i started a company called Khalil derival enterprise where i help young people reduce anxiety and stress so they can prevent the feeling of depression through mental wellness workshop this is my calling this is my life passion and you know i think i do a really good job at it i'm also a self-published author just wrote my book in july called change starts in the mind how to create the mindset you need for success and i'll plug it in at the end of the workshop so y'all could you know go on my website support whatever you want to do and a lot of these gems that i have here is in the book so you know what i'm saying y'all set up right i was raised in an area called pardo which is west of downtown near king and dufferin my background is bayesian and grenadian so you know book 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 to everyone from the caribbean you know shout outs you know i also represent you know africa so you know what i'm saying <laughs> all day every day uh and i am a four times community award winner and two of them was like literally this year so you know i'm really grateful for this because i think when you receive these awards it shows that you are a leader in your community and i think the greatest leader is the greatest servant the greatest leader is the great greatest giver so i'm so grateful that i have the heart to say hey i'm not the only one who's going to make it or you know do great in life but i'm other i'm also going to help others along the way which I think is super important. 
I also tell people when I walk up to them, if people who look like me is on the screen getting shot every day and killed, I cannot call myself a success. I cannot. So I'm there like, yo, how can I pour into my community? How can I pour into the young black males that I see on TV every day getting shot? To s Let me not get into it. And then last but not least, exciting and beautiful news. I just got engaged. So I'm really grateful, you know, blessed with my life partner and, you know, ready to go into that next season and journey of my life. My name is Khalil Durval. I'm the founder of Khalil Durval Enterprise. And today we're talking about mindset for entrepreneurial success. That's a loaded word. And I truly believe that success is not a secret. It's actually a mindset. It's the way you think. It's the way you think that's going to get you to where you need to be. I remember in the beginning stages, I had a mentor who was talking to me and they say, yo, you got to change. You got to change the way you think, right? Because your thoughts determines your feelings. Your feelings determines your actions and your actions determine the results that you get in life. So if you're wondering why am I not getting what I want, go back to your, your thought process, your attitude. Your, per, your, your perception, how you perceive the world. And we've been programmed to think less, to think that we don't have, that we're not smart enough, we're not good enough, we're incompetent, and we're the lowest of the lowest. <laughs> and I'm telling you that through that reprogramming of investing in yourself, the greatest investment is not a car, it's not a home, it's none of those stuff. The greatest investment you can make is in yourself. When you invest in yourself and you, you reprogram your mind to think the way that successful people do, I promise you, I promise you, you'll start to see the growth in your business. How do I know? They say that, you know, um, businesses don't fail, right? Businesses don't fail. It's, it's the business, the structure, it's the system, right? But people do. And guess what? Most people here are their business. So if you are not working on you, if you are not growing, if you're not developing, if you're not becoming the best version of yourself, your business is going to suffer. Your business is going to suffer. As I've grown as a person, my business has become more successful. As I develop my mindset, my business has become more successful. As I develop my skills, my business has become more successful. And this is one of the reasons I uh, uh, titled my book, Chain Starts in the Mind. When your mind changes, your life changes. When your mind changes, your business changes. All right, so today we are going to learn what are some of the tools, the knowledge, the information, the systems, the strategies in order to develop that mindset for entrepreneurial success. All right, sounds good? Okay, let's get into it. So today's guide, what will we talk about? And I'm going to go a little faster because I understand, you know, that <laughs> we're in crunch for time. Time's going by super fast. Uh, so number one, winning mindset. Number two, systemic oppression. We're going to learn about mentorship, right, which is super key on the journey of, you know, getting to where you need to be. We're going to talk about peer support system, which someone brought up earlier in the beginning, right, how important it is and why we need them. And then we're going to talk about leveraging resources and community, uh, you know, navigation. How do we activate our community? How do we tap in? How do we collaborate? How do we, you know, take the resources um, that's, that's there? And so I want to share with you quickly my story and how I came. So if you notice I'm going too fast, type in the chat, slow down. But I really want to just get through my story so you can understand where I come from and how I got to the point to where I am today. I think too many times people talk about, you know, or display or showcase, especially when you look on social media, people are showing that highlights, everything that's going well. And I'm all for it. I like to show people positive and uplifting things. I don't want to, you know, be, uh, you know, a negative Nancy. <laughs> But I also believe you need to give people the blueprint on, you know, the struggles, the challenges, the fears, the setbacks that they have. They need to know what's really involved in, you know, you getting to you, getting to you, you getting to where you want to be and why you think the way you do. 
All right. So I just want to share that, you know, both of my parents are, were, are immigrants. They lived in poverty. They came from Barbados and Grenada to Canada to create a better future for themselves. I grew up in, in a broken home. So, you know, witness a lot of, you know, mental, you know, verbal, you know, some physical abuse growing up. And I, you know, my parents decided to split and that literally changed the trajectory of my life. We dealt with, you know, a lot of financial uh, obstacles. You know, they were getting by, you know, working odd jobs and so forth. Um, so, you know, that put me in a position where I want to certain things. And yeah, I got certain things, but a lot of things that I couldn't get because we couldn't afford it. You know, we didn't have enough money or, you know, that needs to wait. So, you know, being a at-risk neighborhood, you know, you, you see a lot of things. You see a lot of people who are selling, who didn't with mental health, who, who's abusing substances. And for me, I looked around my neighborhood. Since I couldn't get certain things, I wanted to figure out how I can get it. How can I buy the Jordans? How can I buy the nice clothes? And I realized there was one individual that had all the money and those were the drug dealers. So I followed them for quote unquote financial advice. And they told me that, you know, you gotta start committing crime. So I exactly did that. I started stealing, I started robbing. And at the age of 14 years old, believe it or not, right? <laughs> I got arrested. So, you know, had challenges, got in trouble with the law. When I came out and went on house arrest, and when I went to house arrest, I didn't realize that I couldn't speak to anybody. So I was isolated. And through that process, I started developing social anxiety and depression. And I didn't want to tell my parents about it because I didn't want them to think I was crazy. So I just suppressed those feelings and I started smoking and drinking. And those things just made everything worse. You know, it came to the point where I like, okay, I got to fix up. I got to do better. So I started getting a job, started working losing jobs, working again, losing jobs, and, you know, never having anyone to help me navigate the employment, you know, uh, field, um, you know, I felt, I, I felt very discouraged. And it came to the point where I was like, yo, I'm not doing this. This is not working out for me. Let me go back to the streets. So I started selling drugs, started, you know, um, you know, selling it in my school, sold it in my neighborhood to make more money. And then I have a family relative that, you know, told my mom, and, you know, I couldn't do it anymore. So it came to the point where, you know, I was 18 years old at my rock bottom, really confused, right? How many of you are like, yo, I didn't know what I want to do for my future, right? That was me, was lost, had the wrong friends, uh, the wrong people, the wrong influences around me, dealing with social anxiety, dealing with depression, felt like I quote unquote, didn't have a support system. And it came to the point, which I said, trigger warning, that I didn't want to live on this earth anymore, to put in nice terms. And I remember through that process, you know, I was questioning God and, you know, and I was listening to emotional, you know, messages kind of, you know, cheer myself up. And it said, you got to find a mentor. So that's what I did. I went search for a mentor, found this person who introduced me to the world of entrepreneurship, right? And she was successful, you know, in her business. And she had a conversation with me and I tell this story all the time. And she said, Khalil, I know what's your issue. And I got defensive. I'm like, yo, what up? What do you mean I got a problem? You know, are you trying to check me? She says, Khalil, you have a mindset of poverty and lack. In order to change that, you got to study successful people. She said, if you uh, do what successful people do, you will get what they got because success leaves a blueprint. That was like an aha moment. I'm like, bingo. I'm like, oh, cool. I'm like, okay, that sounds great. That sounds nice. What do I need to do? She said, you got to, you know, start reading books. I was like, Scooby? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean start reading books? I'm like, yo, I already read books in school. It's like, no, not that type of book. These are actually self-help and personal development book. So she introduced me to Think and Grow Rich, you know, Rich and um, Poor Dad by uh, Robert Kiyosaki, The Awakening Jai by Tony Robbins, uh, The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. And she, you know, also introduced me to podcasts and uh, motivational speakers. And I started just listening to them, reprogram my mindset, and my thinking. And this is where I came up uh, with the slogan for my company, Change Starts in the Mind, because like I said before, once my mind changed, my life changed. So I'm going to fast forward really quick on how I got to the point to doing some of the great stuff that I'm doing. So fast forward, went to, uh, you know, school, um, you know, I, I started my first window cleaning business, uh, you know, during that time, and I made $18,000 in four months during that window cleaning business. I was like, entrepreneurship is, is, is working, went to uh, condo cleaning realized I wasn't passionate about cleaning. So step back for a bit, 
what I love and what I appreciate is business programs. So I went to business programs, started learning, start developing, building my, my network, clarifying my idea. And um, through that process, I started um, doing music, you know, went to Africa uh, for, uh, for a music uh, a concert and I actually won an award there. So, you know, I have a little background in music um, and uh, came back, st- went into, uh, you know, a business program where I was around fashion designers. And that's where I launched my clothing brand called Fly Merchandise. And I had the opportunity to sell it in stores across the city. And Fly Merchandise uh, was an acronym for First Love Yourself. And it was to empower people to love themselves so they can go out and love others. So that was really cool. Had a celebrity wear my clothing brand. And I said, hey, I want to start my career. Let me tap into, you know, just working and, 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 and so forth. So I had the opportunity to work for RBC Bank as a banking advisor, then about, you know, uh, budgeting, you know, uh, building credit, paying off debt, you know, investing and so forth. And I had the opportunity to go in my community and run some financial financial workshop. And I think entrepreneurs need to learn about finances because it's super key um, when it comes to your business. After um, RBC, I was like, okay, this is not what I want to do for the rest of my life. What do I want to do? I went to an employment agency and I said, hey, two things. I want to work with youth and I want career money. How many of you say, yo, I want that career money, tired of working those odd jobs? I was that guy. So I said, you know, I, I told them that and I said, don't come to me if you don't have those things. Had the opportunity to work for a phenomenal organization, uh, a charity called C Center for Young Black Professionals. And I had the opportunity to learn so many skills, like work for a nonprofit or charity. And I promise you, you will learn everything, right? And I tell people, don't work a job for uh, for money, work a job for information, because all those skills that you learn, you can transfer them towards your business, especially when it comes to hire, how to delegate, how to manage people and so forth. So I had the opportunity to work for that phenomenal organization, you know, learn everything I learned. The pandemic happened. Guess what? Lost <laughs> the jobs that I had. Uh, lost the job working with the city, working with youth. Lost, uh, you know, working with this. Uh, lost my job working with this beautiful organization called C Center for Young Black Professionals. And that's when I said, "Hey, what gift do I have? What can I deploy to the world?" And I said, "Well, I know about mental health because I recently went through a mental health program, and I also know, um, and I also know how to uh, run a business." So I said, why don't I run a mental wellness business? And that's when the company uh, KDE, Khalil Durval Enterprise, was started because I noticed during the pandemic, a lot of people were dealing with mental health challenges and, you know, there was stigma, bias, and shame around it, and no one wanted to talk about it. So I wanted to create a safe space and platform where people can have those discussions. Did that, was able to sustain myself. You know, for the whole pandemic, I said, why don't I take some of that money and create another stream of income? And that's when I, you know, uh, became a self-published author. And throughout this journey, I've just been winning awards after awards after awards, receiving certificates and so forth. I probably have like 26 certificates on my wall. I have, you know, awards. I have, uh, you know, like I said, I had uh, three awards and I just recently got my fourth award. So I'm just grateful to be in the position to give back and help my community, right? To give back and serve my community. I tell people all the time, serve your way to success, right? Just be in service. Look how you can add value to people's lives. You don't have to wait till you make a million dollars. You could do it now. You can do it while you're still on a come up, right? And many people will be grateful for you. And, you know, once you give, you will receive, right? In order to move forward, you have to give back. So this is what we're doing here. We're giving back. We're creating that quote unquote black ecosystem where other entrepreneurs can have the opportunity to be successful by being around people who have already been accomplished in their business. All right. So that's a little bit about my story. Hopefully you're inspired by it. So Marcus Garvey said, if you have no confidence in yourself, you are twice defeated in the race of life. With confidence, you have one even before you have started. So I want to say to the entrepreneurs that are out there, you know, doing your business, if you don't have confidence in yourself, start investing in yourself. And through that investment, you will start to gain confidence because you will become a person of value. Don't focus on having, focus on being, becoming, because When you become, you will do. And when you do, you will have. 
So I'm on a journey. I'm just like, yo, how can I soak up as much information? How can I be the best that I can be? How can I learn? How can I improve the way I think? How can I learn about marketing, promoting? How can I learn about, you know, operations? How can I learn about finances, accounting? How can I learn all these things, graphic design? How can I learn this? Because when I learn these stuff and I invested so much into it, guess what? When I come to a company or organization, I say, hey, this is my price. Guess what? I can do it proudly because I know the value that I add. As entrepreneurs, you get paid to solve people's problems. You get paid to add value to people. So if you know you're solving people's problems and people need you, guess what? You have no problem of asking for the amounts that you deserve. Right. And it's you're defeated twice. You're, de you're, you're, you're defeated mentally and physically when you have no confidence. And when you have that confidence, you already run. You already won because now you do everything that, yo, I deserve this. I deserve to be here. I deserve to be in this position. I deserve to be successful. You're confident. You're like, yo, everything is mine. And I want to tell you today that abundance is your birthright. You deserve to uh, live that abundant life and have more. I'm tired of us just getting by and just settling and just being complacent and say, this is it. You know, slavery, racism, this is it. You know, this is all I have. And I want to tell you, no, a thousand times no. There's so much out there for you, but you got to change your perception and you got to build yourself up so you have that confidence that you go after what you truly want. They say the richest place in the world is not the, you know, in Africa or, you know, it's not in South Asia. The richest place on the planet is the graveyard because that's where many people die with their goals, their dreams and aspirations, and they never truly go after what they truly want. And I want you to type in it in the chat that that's not me. That's not me. I'm not going to be the one to be defeated. I'm not going to be the one who's going to settle. I'm not going to be the one to pro procrastinate. I'm not going to be the one who don't believe in themselves. All right. So next, we're going to watch a video on the winning mindset. And I love this video because this is by Ray Lewis. And he breaks down you know, the lion's mentality. And I think in order for you to be successful and to have a winning, messiah, a winning mindset, you got to think like a lion. And a lion is the king of the jungle. If the lion is the king of the jungle, how can he be the king of the, the jungle? jungle? If, if he's, he's not, not the, the biggest, biggest, the elephant is probably one of the biggest. He can't, he can't be the fastest because that's a cheetah. He, he can't, can't be the smartest. smartest. So he's not the biggest, the fastest, or the smartest. So, so how does a lion become the king of the jungle? His mentality. That's the only difference of a lion and an elephant. When a lion walks up and sees an elephant, he thinks lunch. An elephant thinks run. And it's all mentality. Because when a male lion walks up, he may be outnumbered by a pack of hyenas, but I'm king of my jungle because of my mentality. What happens when you're a gazelle and you're not being pushed? You're not being prodded. You're not giving it a reward. Nobody's encouraging you. What happens when you're a gazelle and the lion's not chasing you anymore? You stop running. But what happens when you're a lion? When you're a lion, it does not make a difference. You realize that if your family is going to eat, that if that pack of lions is to survive, then you got to go hunt. A part of being a beast just ain't eating a gazelle. A part of being a beast is the hunts. It's the hunt that they're excited about. They like to see the gazelles run. Then boom, they take off. Because real lions like to hunt. They love the process just as much as they love the prize. And some of y'all just want to score. You don't like the process. You're not in love with the process. A true hunter's goal is not the prize. A true hunter's goal is to hunt. That's what they live for. They live to hunt. They don't just live to catch it. It's the whole process.
When you are a true hunter, you don't go by time. You go by the gazelle. When you are a true hunter, you hunt until you get a gazelle, and you don't stop until you get one. And then you get another, and then you get another, and you get another. If you're going to do what you say you're going to do, be what you say you're going to be, you're going to have to lie me out. You a gazelle, you gonna come up short. You a gazelle, you gonna have an average experience. You a student, I need you in lion mode. You an entrepreneur, I need you in lion mode. You trying to lose weight, lion mode. You can't do nothing significant in gazelle mode, nothing. Nothing impressive happens in gazelle mode. Nothing happens in run mode, give up mode, quit mode, scared mode, fearful mode, nothing happens. Everything happened in lion mode, like I'm coming to get you. So this is, whoo. This was so powerful. The difference between a lion and gazelle is that a gazelle is running from something and a lion's running to something. And it's said in the video that the lion's not the smartest, it's not the fastest, it's not the strongest, you know, animal, you know, in the jungle. But the reason why a lion is the king of the jungle is because its mentality. Every time it cross, uh, comes across an animal, it looks at it as lunch. It looks at it as food. So what I want you to do is every challenge, every obstacle, every barrier that comes across, I want you to look at it as food. I want you to say that I will overcome this. I will become a winner. I will be victorious. I will challenge this. And when you have this mindset that all you do is win, that you can only be successful, that everything is past possible. I'm telling you, everything that you ever truly wanted will start coming to you. It will start manifesting. The lion's the king of the jungle because it's, it's attitude. You know, work on your attitude because your attitude determines your aptitude, which determines your altitude, which determines that your attitude is, shows how far you go in life. Your attitude shows how far you go in life. So have that mentality, have that winning mindset that everything's food for you and don't let anything stop you. Also like when they talked about loving the journey, loving the process, right? The, the, the lion loves to hunt. And this is why it's super important for you to be passionate and love what you do. So you can love the journey, you can love the hunt, you can love the process. Because if you don't, what's going to happen is when times get difficult, when time gets hard, you are going to give up. You're going to be like, this is not even worth it. And in order for you to see the fruits of your labor, you got to continue to stick with it. Because where your focus goes, your energy flows. And whatever you water, you grow. So you have to sow the seed, you have to pour the water, you have to let the sunshine come. And then that plant or that flower will start to be fruitful. It'll start to flourish. But you got to stick with something long enough. You can't start and finish, start and finish, or start and give up, start and give up. You got to stick with things long enough. And I've been on this journey for like 10 years. And now I'm, I'm saying I finally, you know, uh, you know, starting to see true success in my business. Right? They say it takes 10,000 hours to, to be a success or to be an expert in your field, in your industry. So understand it takes time. It's a journey. Nothing's going to come right away. If it does, amazing, right? But if it doesn't, understand that, you know, it takes time and patience is a virtue. All right. So I want to share quickly. I'm going to run through this quick. We're going to skip out the, 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 the breakout rooms just due to time. And we're going to jump into Q&A just to make sure you get value. So we're talking about the power of economics. So we understand that there's a system that's out there that's stopping us, you know, from actually being, you know, uh, actually gaining that access to opportunity and resources. So there's stereotypes, you know, there's prejudice, there's oppression, there's discrimin discrimination, internalized oppression. It's embedded. Racism is embedded in our whole society. Now we can look at it and say, hey, I'm going to be a victim, right? And I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to blame everyone else. I'm going to blame my friends, my family. I'm going to blame the government. I'm going to blame the banks. I'm going to blame this, saying, oh, everything is too high. Or I'm going to play the game, right, and get educated and learn and come from a place of advantage, right? So understand 
that now is one of the best times to be an entrepreneur. Why? Number one, the pandemic it has leveled the playing field. So that's one, right? Number two, George Floyd. <laughs> George Floyd, right? Many companies and organizations are aware of the inequity. They are aware of the racism. They are aware of the oppression. They're aware of the stere uh, stereotypes. They're aware of the discrimination and they want to correct the situation. So guess what? They're dumping money into black organizations and companies saying, hey, we're sorry. So now that they're doing it, guess what? We got to become competent and we got to be ready to receive it. So type in the chat, I got to get prepared. Put preparation in the chat that you need to prepare. There's some things that you need to learn. There's some things that you need, some skills that you need. Get your books in order. Create that business plan, right? Build your credit. Have a mentor. Register your business. All these things are things you need in order to make sure that you can be successful in this game of entrepreneurship. I want to say pay for coaching and ongoing mentorship. This learning doesn't stop. And those who don't pay, don't pay attention. So I'm big on paying for stuff now. I'm paying for, you know, courses and programs and so forth. I go to a lot of free, uh, free of them, right? I'm grateful for that. But I pay for a lot of it because when you pay, you pay attention. And there's no transformation without a transaction. You have to pay a price in order for you to get to the next level, right? And a mentor is someone who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. They are someone who's already successful. They already have the experience. They have the tools, right? And you want to gain access to that knowledge because what's that... What that is going to do is it's going to cut your learning curve in half. What took them 15, 20 years, guess what? You get with them and they'll cut the, they'll give you everything they know and that learning curve will take you three years. So mentorship is the greatest cheat code. It is the greatest cheat code. Get under somebody. And guess what? A lot of mentors are busy, so you have to pay them. They have to see the value in order of giving you their time. And people will be like, yo, what if I don't have any money? right? Guess what? Some of my mentors I've never met before. I go to Google, Harvard, and YouTube University. I'm there listening to podcasts. I'm there listening to motivational speeches. I'm there soaking up all the information for free. Why wouldn't you utilize these tools? I don't have, listen, I can just click the button and play them at any time, any moment on my free time, when I'm working out, when I'm eating, when I'm doing other stuff, I can listen. My, my car is a, a, is a university. My car, instead of listening to music or listening to the radio, guess what? Put on a podcast. Keep learning, keep growing. And it'll put you in positions where most people aren't able to be in. They said entrepreneurship is, you know, you do things that people aren't willing to do to live the life that people aren't able to live. So you have to make those investments. And it is a GPS system, right? Think about a GPS. When you want to go somewhere, what do you use? You use a GPS. You type in your location. And when you type in your location, what happens is it gives you the fastest way to get to your destination. Woo! So if you want to get to your destination fast, where you want to be fast, this is the this is the key. This is the gem. This is the game. I'm putting on game. I'm telling you about stuff that I live. I'm not telling you something that I just hear. This is an example. This is my life that I'm talking about. And I promise you, if you get under a coach, if you become coachable and you have the right mentor, I'm telling you, your business will take off. Ryan's my mentor. Chris Beth is my mentor. I'm in their program as we speak. Right? And they could vouch for that. I don't play games. I take it serious. So I want to share a few learning resources and community. I know we're running in time, so I'm about to wrap up things and get through things really quickly. So I want to tell you your network is your net worth. Go to networking events and meet people. You can't do it on your, uh, on your own, right? Make those connections. Build those relationships because people do business with people they know, number one, they like, and they trust. And if they don't know you, guess what? They can't flow you. If they don't know you, they can't put money or resources in your pocket, right? They can't put opportunities in your pocket. You want to go to small businesses and local businesses, right? When I did a charity fund, um, you know, a donation drive, 
we went to we drafted up an email and we went to Canadian Tire and they gave us the opportunity to to give toys to kids for Christmas. We also connected with different organizations and then they said, hey, we want to donate meals, right? Collaboration is the new currency in this pandemic. This is what I want you to remember and put it in the chat. Someone drop in the chat. Collaboration is a new currency. You don't have a, you don't need all the money in the world. All you need to do is collaborate because through that, I'm telling you, <laughs> money will come. It has no choice to come. Amen. Because there's value and money is attracted to value. So you want to get, uh, you know, under grassroots nonprofit charities, you know, these business programs. These business programs are giving you grants. They're giving you funding. They're helping you get set up. So continue to go to these programs. It's way better than school. School, you pay 40000 These programs are paying you to learn. How many of you want to get paid to learn? Say I, right? Say I in the chat. If you want to get paid to learn, right, go to a business program. I talked about, you know, getting out there and, and, and getting yourself known. It's not about what you know, it's about who you know, and most importantly, it's about who knows you, because how I got this opportunity, guess what? Ryan knows the work that I do, and he said, Khalil, meet Jules, <laughs> right? So I want you to go on Eventbrite. They have amazing, amazing events that are happening. Just join them, you know, participate in them, and also meetup.com where you have other people who are hosting learning sessions, meet and greet, lunch and link links. Right. And then last but not least, feel free and feel free to volunteer, like give yourself up, give people, you know, if you don't have money to give, give people your time or your energy, give people your time or energy. You don't always have to give money if you don't have money. Right. People will appreciate you when you show up for them, when you help them, when you support them. And it's a principle. When you do that for people, guess what? People are going to do that for you. Um, I want to read this out, a support system. You need that. Entrepreneurship is challenging, difficult, and tough. In order to have a healthy and thriving business, you need a strong support system. Not everything's going to go your way. You're not going to make six figures right away. You're going to feel like giving up and stopping. But I'm telling you, when you have a support system, they're going to help you recover. I have a therapist. I have a pastor, I have phenomenal friends and family. And anytime I need that reboost, re that recharge to be, you know, uh, to go back and keep going, I think about them. I think about my why. Write the people that you love down, that, that you care about, that care about you. And when times go hard, think about them. And that will push you to keep going. Make sure you have a support system. So I want to end off with this before we get into our, our, our Q&A. I want to do some positive affirmations, right? I want to do some positive affirmations because what you say is what you get. And the words you say is the house you live in. You, your life is the outcome of the thoughts and the words that you said yesterday. So if you're like, yo, I'm not where I want to be, you got to start talking about what you want to have what you want to achieve. And let me give you an example. You want to know how, how this works? Because before I said I wanted to be, a, a, before I became an author, guess what? It was a thought first and I spoke it out into existence. And then the word or some of you, the world or, or, or the universe, or some of you believe in God, it brought the resources, the people, the information that I need in order to create that book. And that book had no choice to become a reality. Everything starts with your thoughts and the things that you say. And the biggest enemy, listen, this is deep. The biggest enemy is your inner me. You are nice to people. You big them up. You support them. You, 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 you talk highly of them. But why does it, when it comes to you, when you go through your failures and your setbacks, you talk you down? You're negative to yourself. You say, I can't do. You say, I'm not smart. This is not working out for me. So you got to change your vocabulary. You got to change the words you, you say. And you got to reprogram yourself and chart your, court to great, chart your course to greatness. The way you do that is through your tongue. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And what you say is what you will have. So I want everyone to unmute their mic. You know, as we end off today, I'm super excited and I hope you're getting so much value out of this. 
I want everyone to out uh, uh, unmute their mic and I want them to speak with energy. I want you to declare and I want you to speak into your future, right? I want you to speak into your future. What do you want to see? What do you want to manifest? Manifest. What do you want to come about? Right? Because you have authority. You're a creator. You can create with your words. Does that make sense? All right. Type in the chat. Makes sense. If you think that makes sense. All right, cool. So I'm going to have everyone unmute their mic and they're going to repeat everything after me. All right. On the count of three, we're going to do this. One, two, three. I will honor my roots through my fruits. I will honor my roots through my fruits. Through my fruits. Through my fruits. I think only one person or two people want to be successful. I think only one or two people want to go to the next level. My fruits. Like, my fruits. Listen, <laughs> listen, we need. Woo! All right. I need every single person here to speak into their future because I said what you say is what you get. If you are not happy, if you are not where you want to be, it's because you never spoke what you wanted. And life is bringing you lemons. Life is bringing you what you don't want. So now you have to change and shift things by the way you speak. I told you, listen, did you see, I, I, was, dest I was destined to be a statistic. I, I should have been dead. I should have been in jail I, or I should have been in, in Camp H. This is my life that I'm talking about. And I'm an author, a black author at the age of 28. Do you understand that what that is? And I sold 120 books last month, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know what that means to be running a successful business, to be working for the top employer in the city? Do you know what that means to be recognized by the city, by senior management for the wellness champion? Do you know what that means? I'm breaking generational curses here. And I'm doing it by the words that I say. So I need every single person. If you're here with me, with energy, I need you to repeat after me. I will honor my roots through my fruits. I will let go of failures, no dispute. I will stretch my branches of purpose, no matter what it takes. For my ancestors walked, so I can soar and be great. Great. Clap it up for yourself. Everyone who just spoke into the future, clap it up for yourself. So what I want to do is, because I'm a giver, because I love what, uh, what I do, and I don't do this for money, but I do this to create impact and change lives. So I want to do this kind gesture. I want to give everyone a free copy of my ebook. Awesome. So once again, I want to thank you all for participating, for being part of this amazing workshop. Y'all are dope, are, are, are great. I believe each and every single one of you are going to be successful. And listen, you don't need all this information. Just take one thing and start taking action. Just do one thing and start applying it. Just do one thing. And I promise you that you will see the fruits of your labor. So once again, if you want to connect with me, here's my phone number, my email, and my website, www.khalildurville.com. I have my books, I have my clothing brand, and I also have the workshops that I facilitate around mental health. You can follow me on all social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you name it. I'm there, YouTube, at Khalil Durivo. So I want to thank Youth Village and ACBN for your time. And remember, as you leave here today, remember that change starts in the mind. Any questions? Hey, Khalil, cool. can you hear me? I can't hear you. Yeah, I'm, I was going to ask the question I was asking at the beginning, which was um, basically it's like a staying motivated question and how you kind of, um, I kind of feel like the it's like a level up scenario, right? Like once you get to a goal you initially set, sometimes you can get too stagnant or fall off the wagon somehow or something. Um, kind of wondering how you've dealt with that in the past or if you've had, I, I'm assuming you had, and how you kept going. So your question is how do I like, I stay motivated and keep going when I have fallen off a task? Yeah, exactly. Or, or not okay, to plateau. Great. So you keep growing and growing, keep the learning attitude. Great question. So sometimes when I hit that point in my life, like, I have to listen to like my, my body. I need to listen to myself and say, hey, what does this mean? 
right? So I think a problem with a lot of people is th that they don't take time to reflect and right. go in sol solitude, you know? How can I improve? How can I get better? Know what worked, what didn't work, right? So take that time. Solitude is super important and take time to reflect. One of the things you can do that I do is a, a, a journal. I get a journal and just write down my thoughts, write down my feelings, write down my emotions, you know, just write everything, just let it flow. And I'm telling you, it's very therapeutic, right? And then you can go back and like, like oh, okay, you know, what, what can I learn from this situation, right? It's either mm -hmm. a lesson or a blessing. Also, sometimes you just need a break. You need to go to a retreat. You need to escape the city. You need to do something where you're not caught up. Sometimes you just need to reset. And if you can't do that, yo, take a nap. You know, relax, watch a movie, go hang out with your friends, do something fun. We need to practice self-care and energize ourselves. We cannot just keep going. We are not robots, right? So we got to make sure that we reset, you know, and come back to the point where we're ready to go again, right? And then also what I would say is that um, you need a morning routine. Mm -hmm. The reason why I can come from a place of abundance is because I pour into my cup first. What you guys are getting is my abundance, my overflow, my cup runneth over. You guys are not getting stuff that I need. My cup is not empty. It's mm -hmm. full. Why? Because I'm intentional and I'm deliberate about it. So every morning when I wake up, I have six to eight things that I do every single day in order to pour into my cup. So when I'm ready to uh, tackle the day, guess what? I'm energized. I'm full of life. I'm full of energy. You know, I've learned. I've grown. Get 1% better every single day. And that's through a morning routine. You know, meditate. Meditation is so key. You're breathing, right? Using positive affirmations, which, which I showed you how to do in this presentation, mm -hmm. right? Go take walks. Exercise. Read something, you know, uplifting. Listen to a motivational video. These are all different things that you can utilize that can get you motivated, inspired for your day. So when the stress comes, guess what? You know how to manage and handle them effectively. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that was awesome. That was more than the answer I was expecting. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks so much, Kilo. I just wanted to jump in because we're going to have to wrap up, but I did want to take a moment to just thank you so much for such an engaging workshop. You know, it really emphasized for all of us the importance of mentorship and of your mindset being such integral tools and, you know, how making these connections can be key when we're building a business, but also just for your life as well. There are so many tidbits that I wrote down and bolded. And from the chat, I can tell that so many other people were positively impacted by your presentation. So thank you so much. And hopefully we keep these conversations going. Thank you all so much for joining us for the final event in this three-part series. Um, throughout this series, we've had such an incredible opportunity to connect with other Black entrepreneurs from across Ontario and hear from such inspiring keynote speakers as well as build connections and strengthen our own personal networks as well, which we've learned tonight is, you know, such a key um, piece to building your business and throughout this series as well. And I'd also like to thank all of our keynote speakers uh, from across all three events, Khalil, Moses, Janelle, Keisha, and Chantel for sharing their learnings with us that we will very much continue to help and use and inspire ourselves as we continue to build our businesses. I'd also like to thank all of you and all of our attendees across the entire series, uh, as well as everyone at the Youth Village, including the Board of Directors and the Advisory Council for creating this space, as well as to ACBN and the Government of Canada for all of your support. While we're closing out this series now, this is just the beginning for the Youth Village, and it's really hard to believe that given how amazing this series was, but there's still so much more to come. So again, we do encourage you to give us your feedback on those pieces, and you can always reach out if you think of anything you'd like to see. Um, we'll also be in touch shortly to share more information about our intergenerational knowledge exchange program. And it's going to be very similar to a mentorship program, but we'll acknowledge that each person has something to give and gain in the mentorship like this series did. So we'd love all of you to join that. And with that, I won't say goodbye, but I will say see you soon. So thank you all and good night.